in my opinion, Dessaline is um, one of the most important figures in world history. My name is Julia Gaffield. I'm Associate Professor of History at Georgia State University. Um, I'm currently writing a biography of Jean-Jacques Dessalines, Haiti's first head of state. Um, what got me, or what inspired me to write this book was um, the fact that there are um, almost no English language biographies of him and that he has, um, he doesn't have the central role um, in a kind of global history that he definitely should have. In my opinion, Dessalines is um, one of the most important figures in world history. Um, he isn't as well known as he should be. Um, he is a, um, a key abolitionist in the early 19th century. Um, he represents a fight for equality um, and dignity among peoples of African descent. Um, and he is just so critical for a lot of the conceptions um, that we kind of claim uh, in our modern world, um, liberty, equality, um, human dignity, human rights. Outside of Haiti, he has been vilified um, for centuries, right? And, and um, I talked a little bit about this in terms of where he was born, um, right? But this translated also to um, understandings of um, kind of his his entire life and his um, governorship and then his reign as emperor. Um, foreigners focused on his um, his violence um, or alleged violence, his alleged illiteracy, um, the fact or the the allegation that he couldn't speak or understand French, um, and kind of pointed to this as proof of his inability. Um, to, to run a country and to participate in um, the family of nations. Um, so it was a way to kind of undermine the country, undermine the revolution um, and prove that this was kind of, um, you know, that um, people of African descent were um, unprepared, ill-equipped for self-government, which then of course justifies colonialism um, and the continuation of slavery, right? So it's a very, um, it's, a, it's a claim with a very specific uh, purpose that benefited foreigners. Um, but, but what is I think kind of remarkable is how much these inaccuracies um, remain in scholarship. Um, and there's still the sense that um, both in, in, his, in histories and in kind of popular representations that somehow um, Dessalines set Haiti on the wrong path and like doomed the country forever, um, which of course is not true, um, right? But this, this remains even in the 21st century and it's just repeating um, these super racist claims that date back to, you know, 1803, 1804. Um, so there's this, you know, he as a kind of person um, takes on, he kind of represents the country in a way and people are um, really invested in undermining um, the revolution's success. Um, and so it is, I think, remarkable how, pers how pervasive these narratives have been for so long. I think what is what is crucial is that when he declared independence, um, he recognized that the fight against colonialism would be um, what he called eternal, right? That that simply declaring independence was not going to be enough. Um, that this was going to be an ongoing battle that they would have to continue fighting. Um, and I don't know that he imagined you know, 200 plus years later that this fight would still be going on, right? But the the legacies of slavery and the legacies of colonialism are still very much at the foundations of our current global hierarchy, um, right? And so he was um, aware that simply declaring independence was not going to um, automatically mean 
equal acceptance and that this was going to be a continual battle um, that they would have to physically fight, um, but also um, fight in other ways, right? In, in kind of laws and um, treaties um, and establishing these networks. Um, so I think it's, I think it's, um, Desaline is relevant to our current day because um, he recognized that decolonization um, was a process um, and that it would be a constant struggle to fight these um, foreign powers.